Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about folders and text documents. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So folders, um, we are deep in the binder um, for all of these tutorials I'm doing now. So binder is this pane over here. So when I talk about the binder, I'm talking about this whole pane. And so folders are just, you know, kind of these guys, um, anything that contains other stuff inside of it. And um, up here, I've got my part one folders. And then within my part one folder, I've got a couple of chapter folders that we can see here. And within those are some scenes to create new folders. You can do it a couple of different ways. So we can right click within here, add new folder, and it will throw it in down at the bottom. New folder. Um, or you can select where you want the folder to show up after and then come up here to this drop down button new folder and we can see that this folder pops up um, under it's the next folder down underneath this one if we want this to be inside we gotta drag it up and nest it i don't want to do that i'll take it back down here so that's how we add new folders easy peasy to rename your folders just double click in here and rename it that way. Or you can just one click and it will pop up too. So either one click or two clicks, whatever you fancy. Another way to do it is down here. This is a new document and this is a new folder. So boop and there it goes. To make a new text document, which is the thing that the manuscript is actually contained within, it's a very similar procedure to the folders. So up here, or rather, so double click or right click, add new text, and you go. Or you can come up here. So this green plus is the document. Something that I really love about Scrivener that you're seeing right now in action is the hover to discover feature. So it says here, add a new document or press and hold for more options. So we can press and hold and there we go. But you can also get to that by just hitting that little drop down. You don't have to hold it, hold your finger down. So if we hit just this green one once, here we go. And we have a new scene. And down here, like I said, this is the add a new folder um, button. And this is the add a new text document button. So lots of different ways to add folders and add text documents. And then these as well, just like with the folders, you can either double click to change the name, or you can just, once you're selected, single click on it and change the name. Bada bing, bada boom. So right now you can see that some of my, um, my scenes um, have these kind of colored backgrounds. Some of them do not. So how do we get this colored background? What is this colored background even? This colored background is connected down here to the label and I talked about labels and sections and status in this video up here so go check that out but real quick in whatever you want to designate uh, you will designate whatever your labels are I designate them as my um, kind of in line with my seven point plot plotting system <laughs> so you know these red ones are the hook and this orange one down here is the uh, first plot turn. This green is the midpoint. So I use those so that I can have an overview, like a bird's eye view kind of, of, of how my pacing is over here. So let's say I want to make this one. So see, we got no label. If you click up here, it's the hook. And now no label. So we'll click on here. And you can't see my menu because it went down, not up. But I'm going to make it another hook. So it pops up like that. And that's that's that. That's the backgrounds. Um, the default 
when you do this is not a colored background. It'll just show up like this, but it'll have the designation of the hook down here. So in order to have that background um, be that shade, uh, we'll go up to the main menu bar up here and view. And so I changed my labels to say serial is cool, but usually this says use label color in. So the binder is checked, index cards are checked, and this will be unchecked as a default shows background color and binder. So let's see if when I uncheck it and we can see that it's not the background color, it's just these little dots. I like the background color. So I come back in here, show background color. And so you can toggle that on and off in there. I have talked about the section type. So if we come up here to this folder and look over the section type, we've got a part heading. And then let's go down to this one and we can see that it changes to chapter heading. We hit this drop down menu. These are all of our different section headers that are possible. And I've got it clicked on structure based just because Scrivener is pretty smart about this kind of thing. And it will arrange your sections based upon how you have things nested over here. And sections are really important when we compile it for like export out of Scrivener, which I'm going to talk about in a separate video because compiling is a whole beast unto itself and I'm not going to be able to cover it, um, give it, uh, give it what it needs in, in part of a, a different video. So at the very bottom of this menu, you can't see it because it's cut off. It says edit. So we'll click on edit dot dot dot. So this uh, window will pop up and these section types, so label, the status list, so on, but we're going to stick up here with section types. And you can see all the section types we have. And I tell everybody to, you know, in these tutorials, I say, pick the, the novel with parts template because of backend stuff. And this is part of that that I'm talking about. It has these sections already in it. And if you just choose a blank template, I don't think it has any in here. It only has one or two. So choose that. Um, those templates and it helps you out because it has stuff like this in it already. So in here, these will, uh, so default types by structure. So I, I always say, click on the structure based, right? If you want to change the structure based, you can come in here. This is how you do that. So we've got this selected right now to show you over here, which, what level of um, nesting that counts as. So let's go root folders in here. They don't get a section type. Yeah, we'll skip them. So um, your parts will get the part heading. That's how they will compile. Next folder down, we'll get chapter headings and that's how they'll compile and so on and so forth. And if you want to change that, just hit the drop down and change it in here. I don't recommend changing it until maybe a little bit later when we talk about compiling and how to make your own templates for headings and sections and all that kind of stuff. Um, so for now, I would say just leave it and we'll talk about compiling in a later video. So that's pretty much this video about the binder, the folders, and the text documents over here. So thank you for tuning to this video. And I hope you learned something new about the binder feature, the folders, text documents, Scrivener in general. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.